Iron Supporting Food Banks collects food and cash donations for needy families in Newham Borough and beyond. Please consider making a donation via their Just Giving page, the link for which you will find in the description section of this stream. Come on you Irons! Welcome back to the West Ham Massive. Thanks for joining me. Please don't forget, put a thumbs up on the video, subscribe to the channel, share it to your social media platforms, all those good things. And don't forget to put a comment in the section below. So I'm recording this. I'm on my way to get a bus to Evesley International to get on the train to go to Stratford. I'm leaving a bit early because I want to go to get a bit of high and mash with some pals. So always good. Anyway. I'm recording this obviously in the immediate aftermath deadline day and we managed to get some outs and we managed to get one player in on the deadline day just to quickly sort of go over the players that have gone so James Paul Krause has departed one year after he's walked in it's a loan deal Nottingham Forest I don't believe any of the players that we've released on loan and there's three that there's any option nor obligation to buy. They're just straight loans. We'll see what happens. So James Ward Prowse has gone there, Nottingham Forest. I think it's a move that makes sense for everybody. I don't think he really fitted in. Uh, it's fairly clear. 16 minutes in the first two Premier League games. He obviously played in the League Cup game, but yeah, he's just not mobile enough for what the manager wants to do. And I think you can probably stomach that when you've got one player that's maybe lacking in mobility, um, but not two. And so it seems that he's favoured Thomas Suchek, which means James Ward Prowse has got to go. Um, good luck to him. He'll probably score a free kick, won't he? That would be so West Ham. But he can't do it against us because it's a loan. Obviously, he can't play against his parent club. So wish him all the best. Onwards and upwards. Maxwell Cornet, on the other hand, down to the south coast again. The player that came in, I thought he started well. Got an injury. He decided to get treated back in France. I don't think that went down with the hierarchy. Never really got any traction. I mean, sliding doors moment. If that goal against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, if that had stood, might that have restored his confidence, which... I think it's fairly safe to say was shattered by that point. Um, possibly. Only scored the one goal away to Sheffield United last season. Even then, I didn't think he had a bad game there, to be honest. Even then, he was back on the bench the next game, so manager never fancied him. Damage was done. Again, wish him all the very best. Naya Fagea. Wow, that's a player that has a big opinion of themselves. Now, I don't even so much have a problem with that. I think there's, um, you can, you've got to have confidence in your ability, but there's a very fine dividing line between confidence and arrogance. And I think that he's strayed into the opposite. I think quite an arrogant attitude. It's all about him. I just, yeah, very, very strange. Talks about, you know, he was interested in going around Madrid. Well, so is everybody, mate. But guess what? If he was that good, we wouldn't have bought you from Stade René. And... Yeah, you've ended up going to Real Sociedad. Well, it's halfway, I suppose, towards Real Madrid. It's got Real in the title. Um, again, a player that I think that probably was in a team under Moyes that wasn't set up to get the best out of his attributes. And possibly confidence is an issue there. But even sort of like with a new manager coming in, he played in the game against Celta Vigo and was responsible for one of the goals which was a common theme in his time at West Ham. He had a propensity to little lapses in concentration, which proved critical as far as conceding goals is concerned. And when you're a defender, that's actually what you're supposed to be stopping, isn't it? So, anyway, so he's gone to Real Sociedad. 
But let's now come to the one that we brought in. The one that we've been waiting for for what seems like an eternity. Half of the transfer window, it seems to have been. That this player has been waiting in the wings, just waiting for a squad place to become available, for wages to be freed up, whatever. Finally, it happened with those three departures. And the green light was given very, very late in the window. The on loan, and my understanding is that there is an option, not an obligation, but an option to purchase at the end of the loan. Spanish international, Carlos Soler. Now, I did a previous video a couple of weeks back and just gave a little bit of a thing about who he is, but some of you may or may not have seen it. So he came through at Valencia. He, um, he's also won an Olympic silver medal. He's pals with Pablo Fornells. They played together at youth grade international football where they won the under, 20, under 21s or under 17s European Championship, whatever it was, together. Um, story has it that he learned to speak English by watching Premier League coverage on Canal Plus. And the reason he got into football, we've got Nintendo to thank, apparently. Uh, something to do with, apparently, Valencia. I think he was about four years old or something like that. Valencia were sort of quite interested in taking him on. Uh, he was quite shy by all accounts. He was a little bit, like, apprehensive. He's a kid, you know, four years of age or whatever. And apparently his grand granddad bought him a Game Boy and said, go on, get yourself to Valencia, I'll let you have a Game Boy. And he went, yeah, go on then, granddad, I'll have some of that. And the rest is history. He went on and he's had a, a very good footballing career. Now, he's gone to Paris Saint-Germain and... The problem I think he's faced is that they've obviously got a glittering array of talent. They're one of the biggest clubs in world football, certainly in terms of their financial firepower, if not in terms of their achievements, but there you go. Uh, and he's, he's been used as a bit of a, a bit part player, if we're being honest, but there's no, no shame in that at a club with the wealth of talent that they've got to their disposal. But he's obviously, he's got to a point now in his career where he wants change of scenery and wants a new challenge and at the same point in time we obviously have got a little bit of a situation with Lucas Paquetar who's a similar player in terms of their style and what they what their role is within the team you know they're playmakers they're sort of people that, that are sort of like loading the gun for the strikers and obviously we don't know what's going to happen is he going to be cleared is he going to be found guilty if he's found guilty then basically we've got a problem because that's then him serving some sort of ban. And even if he doesn't, even if he's exonerated, in my opinion, he'll be off this time next year anyway. So um, whether that's because he agitates for removal, whether that's because actually we think actually we need to cash in now. Um, but one way or another, I, I think that this time next year, Lucas Paquetar, for whatever reason, won't be in a claret blue shirt. So I think probably what the signing of Lucas uh, Carlos Soler, excuse me, is, is its uh, succession planning, which is something that, in the past, we've been guilty of not doing. So I, I absolutely think this is the right move. I see that this season, Carlos Soler and Lucas Paquetar will be um, master and apprentice. There will be... Um, he'll, he'll get plenty of game time, I'm sure. Otherwise, he wouldn't come. I'm sure he's, he's asked for certain assurances. And he's probably got them. So he'll come in. He'll obviously work as a playmaker. He'll work alongside Lucas Paquetar. And he'll learn from him. And at some point, I believe he will take over from him. I also suspect, just to sort of go on from that, I also suspect that if things go in a certain direction of travel, there's every likelihood that Carlos Soler will actually be keeping that space warm in the first eleven for George Earthy. That's my hope anyway, if not my expectation. I suspect that Carlos Soler will take over from Paquetar. He'll be our, our playmaker, our heartbeat, our, our modern-day version of Trevor Brooking, if you will but he will ultimately make way for George Earthy, providing, obviously, George Earthy does what we hope and think he's capable of doing. What do you think? Comment sections below. Get stuck into it. What do you think on my theory? But I think it's a good move for West Ham. I think that, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit of, like I say, forward thinking on the part of the club. And it's something that we've not really done too much of in the past. We've, we've been guilty of just sort of like operating in the here and the now. So this is a signing that I actually am quite keen on. I think that it's uh, it's a good move. 
and uh, we'll see. We'll see how it works out. But I mean, it's three players that have gone out. Good bit of business. It would have been preferable for me to get them out the door permanently um, to have some sort of clarity on where we're at. But we've got them off the wage bill at least in part, if not in total. Um, the one player that remains to talk about, I guess, uh, is um, Kurt Zuma. Because a lot of people are probably wondering what's happening with him. Well, because he's going to a Saudi Pro League club, it's um, it, it, they've actually got until Monday to get that deal done. So the fact that he hasn't moved out doesn't necessarily mean that that move is dead in the water going to Al or Uber in the Saudi Pro League. That can still be done, if providing it's done by Monday. So we'll wait and see. But um, yeah. I suspect, obviously, Danny Ings, whether he'll hang around or whether we'll just make an offer just to sort of pay up his contract and send him on his way. Don't know, but we'll wait and see. But, uh, yeah, some good some good news, good transfer business. The transfer window is now open. Silly season will begin in the run-up to January 1st when the, the winter transfer window opens, and there'll be a bit more rumours going around, and I'm sure I'll be doing a few more of these when that comes around. But Carlos Soler is now a West Ham player, albeit on loan, but we do have an option to buy, whereas going out of the door... Also on loan, James Ward-Prowse to Nottingham Forest, Maxwell Cornet to Southampton, Naya Fagare to La Liga team, Real Sociedad. My information is that none of these are either options or obligations to buy. They're just straight loans, so they will be coming back in the conclusion of the season, um, at least very briefly, even if it's sort of like just to sort of say hello, grab my things and go. They will come back. Um, and like I say, Kurt Zuma will probably go to the Saudi Pro League by Monday at the latest. Fingers crossed for him. Good luck. Thanks for your service. Um, but get your comments in the section below. Get stuck into it. And as I say, don't forget to drop a like on the stream. Subscribe to the channel and uh, share this to your social media platforms. Don't forget to hit the bell icon and you'll get alerts on new content. Thanks very much for your support. We'll uh, see you again soon. Take care. Come on, you Irons. Irons Supporting Food Banks collects food and cash donations for needy families in Newham Borough and beyond. Please consider making a donation via their Just Giving page, the link for which you will find in the description section of this stream. Come on you Irons!